A composite material also called a composition material or shortened to composite, which is the common name is a material made from two or more constituent materials with significantly different physical or chemical properties that, when combined, produce a material with characteristics different from the individual components. The individual components remain separate and distinct within the finished structure, differentiating composites from mixtures and solid solutions. The new material may be preferred for many reasons. Common examples include materials which are stronger, lighter, or less expensive when compared to traditional materials. More recently, researchers have also begun to actively include sensing, actuation, computation and communication into composites, which are known as robotic materials. Typical engineered composite materials include reinforced concrete and masonry, composite wood such as plywood, reinforced plastics such as fiber reinforced polymer or fiberglass. Ceramic matrix composites, composite ceramic and metal matrices, metal matrix composites, and other advanced composite materials. Composite materials are generally used for buildings, bridges, and structures such as boat hulls, swimming pool panels, racing car bodies, shower stalls, bathtubs, storage tanks, imitation granite, and cultured marble sinks and countertops. The most advanced examples perform routinely on spacecraft and aircraft in demanding environments. History The earliest man-made composite materials were straw and mud combined to form bricks for building construction. Ancient brickmaking was documented by Egyptian tomb paintings. Wattle and daub is one of the oldest man made composite materials, at over 6,000 years old. Concrete is also a composite material, and is used more than any other man made material in the world. As of 2006, about 7.5 billion cubic meters of concrete are made each year more than one cubic meter for every person on Earth. Woody plants, both true wood from trees and such plants as palms and bamboo, yield natural composites that were used prehistorically by mankind and are still used widely in construction and scaffolding. Plywood 3400 BC by the ancient Mesopotamians, gluing wood at different angles gives better properties than natural wood. Cartoonage layers of linen or papyrus soaked in plaster dates to the first intermediate period of Egypt c. 2181-2055 BC and was used for death masks. Cob material, mud bricks, or mud walls, using mud clay with straw or gravel as a binder have been used for thousands of years. Concrete was described by Vitruvius, writing around 25 BC in his ten books on architecture, distinguished types of aggregate appropriate for the preparation of lime mortars. For structural mortars, he recommended pozzolana, which were volcanic sands from the sandlike beds of Pazuli brownish-yellow-gray in color near Naples and reddish-brown at Rome. Vitruvius specifies a ratio of one part lime to three parts pozzolana for cements used in buildings and a one to two ratio of lime to pulvis putelanus for underwater work, essentially the same ratio mixed today for concrete used at sea. Natural cement stones, after burning, produced cements used in concretes from post-Roman times into the 20th century, with some properties superior to manufactured Portland cement. Papier-mâché, a composite of paper and glue, has been used for hundreds of years. The first artificial fiber reinforced plastic was Bakelite which dates to 1907, although natural polymers such as shellac predate it. One of the most common and familiar composite is fiberglass, in which small glass fiber are embedded within a polymeric material normally an epoxy or polyester. The glass fiber is relatively strong and stiff, but also brittle, whereas the polymer is ductile, but also weak and flexible. Thus the resulting fiberglass is relatively stiff, strong, flexible, and ductile. Examples <laughs> 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 Composite materials 
Concrete is the most common artificial composite material of all and typically consists of loose stones aggregate held with a matrix of cement. Concrete is an inexpensive material, and will not compress or shatter even under quite a large compressive force. However, concrete cannot survive tensile loading i.e., if stretched it will quickly break apart. Therefore, to give concrete the ability to resist being stretched, steel bars, which can resist high stretching forces, are often added to concrete to form reinforced concrete. Fiber reinforced polymers FRP S include carbon fiber reinforced polymer CFRP and glass reinforced plastic GRP. If classified by matrix then there are thermoplastic composites, short fiber thermoplastics, long fiber thermoplastics or long fiber reinforced thermoplastics. There are numerous thermoset composites, including paper composite panels. Many advanced thermoset polymer matrix systems usually incorporate aramid fiber and carbon fiber in an epoxy resin matrix. Shape memory polymer composites are high-performance composites, formulated using fiber or fabric reinforcement and shape memory polymer resin as the matrix. Since a shape memory polymer resin is used as the matrix, these composites have the ability to be easily manipulated into various configurations when they are heated above their activation temperatures and will exhibit high strength and stiffness at lower temperatures. They can also be reheated and reshaped repeatedly without losing their material properties. These composites are ideal for applications such as lightweight, rigid, deployable structures, rapid manufacturing, and dynamic reinforcement. High strain composites are another type of high performance composites that are designed to perform in a high deformation setting and are often used in deployable systems where structural flexing is advantageous. Although high strain composites exhibit many similarities to shape memory polymers, their performance is generally dependent on the fiber layout as opposed to the resin content of the matrix. Composites can also use metal fibers reinforcing other metals, as in metal matrix composites MMC or ceramic matrix composites CMC, which includes bone hydroxyapatite reinforced with collagen fibers, cermet ceramic and metal and concrete. Ceramic matrix composites are built primarily for fracture toughness, not for strength. Another class of composite materials involve woven fabric composite consisting of longitudinal and transverse laced yarns. Woven fabric composites are flexible as they are in form of fabric. Organic matrix, ceramic aggregate composites include asphalt concrete, polymer concrete, mastic asphalt, mastic roller hybrid, dental composite, syntactic foam and mother of pearl. Chobham armor is a special type of composite armor used in military applications. Additionally, thermoplastic composite materials can be formulated with specific metal powders resulting in materials with a density range from 2 g per cc to 11 g per cc same density as lead. The most common name for this type of material is high gravity compound HGC although lead replacement is also used. These materials can be used in place of traditional materials such as aluminium, stainless steel, brass, bronze, copper, lead, and even tungsten in weighting, balancing for example, modifying the center of gravity of a tennis racket, vibration damping, and radiation shielding applications. High-density composites are an economically viable option when certain materials are deemed hazardous and are banned such as lead or when secondary operations costs such as machining, finishing, or coating are a factor. A sandwich-structured composite is a special class of composite material that is fabricated by attaching two thin but stiff skins to a lightweight but thick core. The core material is normally low strength material, but its higher thickness provides the sandwich composite with high bending stiffness with overall low density. Wood is a naturally occurring composite comprising cellulose fibers in a lignin and hemicellulose matrix. 
Engineered wood includes a wide variety of different products such as wood fiber board, plywood, oriented strand board, wood plastic composite, recycled wood fiber in polyethylene matrix, picrete, sawdust in ice matrix, plastic impregnated or laminated paper or textiles, arborite, formica, plastic and micata. Other engineered laminate composites, such as malite, use a central core of end grain balsa wood, bonded to surface skins of light alloy or GRP. These generate low weight, high rigidity materials. Particulate composites have particle as filler material dispersed in matrix, which may be non metal, such as glass, epoxy. Automobile tire is an example of particulate composite. Advanced diamond-like carbon DLC coated polymer composites have been reported where the coating increases the surface hydrophobicity, hardness and wear resistance. Topic: <laughs> Products. Fiber reinforced composite materials have gained popularity, despite their generally high cost in high performance products that need to be lightweight, yet strong enough to take harsh loading conditions such as aerospace components, tails, wings, fuselages, propellers, boat and skull hulls, bicycle frames, and racing car bodies. Other uses include fishing rods, storage tanks, swimming pool panels, and baseball bats. The Boeing 787 and Airbus A350 structures including the wings and fuselage are composed largely of composites. Composite materials are also becoming more common in the realm of orthopedic surgery, and it is the most common hockey stick material. Carbon composite is a key material in today's launch vehicles and heat shields for the re-entry phase of spacecraft. It is widely used in solar panel substrates, antenna reflectors and yokes of spacecraft. It is also used in payload adapters, inter-stage structures and heat shields of launch vehicles. Furthermore, disc brake systems of airplanes and racing cars are using carbon, carbon material, and the composite material with carbon fibers and silicon carbide matrix has been introduced in luxury vehicles and sports cars. In 2006, a fiber-reinforced composite pool panel was introduced for in-ground swimming pools, residential as well as commercial, as a non-corrosive alternative to galvanized steel. In 2007, an all-composite military Humvee was introduced by TPI Composites Inc. and Armor Holdings Inc., the first all-composite military vehicle. By using composites the vehicle is lighter, allowing higher payloads. In 2008, carbon fiber and DuPont Kevlar five times stronger than steel were combined with enhanced thermoset resins to make military transit cases by ECS composites creating 30% lighter cases with high strength. Pipes and fittings for various purpose like transportation of potable water, fire fighting, irrigation, seawater, desalinated water, chemical and industrial waste, and sewage are now manufactured in glass-reinforced plastics. Composite materials used in tensile structures for facade application provides the advantage of being translucent. The woven base cloth combined with the appropriate coating allows better light transmission. This provides a very comfortable level of illumination compared to the full brightness of outside. The wings of wind turbines, in growing sizes in the order of 50 meters length are fabricated in composites since several years. Two lower leg amputees run on carbon composite spring-like artificial feet as quick as healthy sportsmen. High pressure gas cylinders typically about 7 to 9 liter volume by 300 bars pressure for firemen are nowadays constructed from carbon composite. Type 4 cylinders include metal only as boss that carries the thread to screw in the valve. Topic <inaudible> overview <inaudible> <inaudible> Composites are made up of individual materials referred to as constituent materials. There are two main categories of constituent materials, matrix binder and reinforcement. At least one portion of each type is required. The matrix material surrounds and supports the reinforcement materials by maintaining their relative positions. 
The reinforcements impart their special mechanical and physical properties to enhance the matrix properties. A synergism produces material properties unavailable from the individual constituent materials, while the wide variety of matrix and strengthening materials allows the designer of the product or structure to choose an optimum combination. Engineered composite materials must be formed to shape. The matrix material can be introduced to the reinforcement before or after the reinforcement material is placed into the mold cavity or onto the mold surface. The matrix material experiences a melding event, after which the part shape is essentially set. Depending upon the nature of the matrix material, this melding event can occur in various ways such as chemical polymerization for a thermoset polymer matrix, or solidification from the melted state for a thermoplastic polymer matrix composite. A variety of molding methods can be used according to the end item design requirements. The principal factors impacting the methodology are the natures of the chosen matrix and reinforcement materials. Another important factor is the gross quantity of material to be produced. Large quantities can be used to justify high capital expenditures for rapid and automated manufacturing technology. Small production quantities are accommodated with lower capital expenditures but higher labor and tooling costs at a correspondingly slower rate. Many commercially produced composites use a polymer matrix material often called a resin solution. There are many different polymers available depending upon the starting raw ingredients. There are several broad categories, each with numerous variations. The most common are known as polyester, vinyl ester, epoxy, phenolic, polyamide, polyamide, polypropylene, peak, and others. The reinforcement materials are often fibers but also commonly ground minerals. The various methods described below have been developed to reduce the resin content of the final product, or the fiber content is increased. As a rule of thumb, layup results in a product containing 60% resin and 40% fiber, whereas vacuum infusion gives a final product with 40% resin and 60% fiber content. The strength of the product is greatly dependent on this ratio. Martin Hub and Lucien A. Lucia consider wood to be a natural composite of cellulose fibers in a matrix of lignin. Topic: Constituents. Topic: Matrices. Topic. Organic Polymers are common matrices especially used for fiber-reinforced plastics. Road surfaces are often made from asphalt concrete which uses bitumen as a matrix. Mud wattle and daub, has seen extensive use. Typically, most common polymer-based composite materials, including fiberglass, carbon fiber, and Kevlar, include at least two parts, the substrate and the resin. Polyester resin tends to have yellowish tint, and is suitable for most backyard projects. Its weaknesses are that it is UV-sensitive and can tend to degrade over time, and thus generally is also coated to help preserve it. It is often used in the making of surfboards and for marine applications. Its hardener is a peroxide, often MEKP methyl ethyl ketone peroxide. When the peroxide is mixed with the resin, it decomposes to generate free radicals, which initiate the curing reaction. Hardeners in these systems are commonly called catalysts, but since they do not reappear unchanged at the end of the reaction, they do not fit the strictest chemical definition of a catalyst. Vinyl ester resin tends to have a purplish to bluish to greenish tint. This resin has lower viscosity than polyester resin and is more transparent. This resin is often billed as being fuel-resistant, but will melt in contact with gasoline. It tends to be more resistant over time to degradation than polyester resin and is more flexible. It uses the same hardeners as polyester resin at a similar mix ratio and the cost is approximately the same. Epoxy resin is almost transparent when cured. 
In the aerospace industry, epoxy is used as a structural matrix material or as a structural glue. Shape memory polymer SMP resins have varying visual characteristics depending on their formulation. These resins may be epoxy based, which can be used for auto body and outdoor equipment repairs, cyanate ester based, which are used in space applications, and acrylate based, which can be used in very cold temperature applications, such as for sensors that indicate whether perishable goods have warmed above a certain maximum temperature. These resins are unique in that their shape can be repeatedly changed by heating above their glass transition temperature Tg. When heated, they become flexible and elastic, allowing for easy configuration. Once they are cooled, they will maintain their new shape. The resins will return to their original shapes when they are reheated above their Tg. The advantage of shape memory polymer resins is that they can be shaped and reshaped repeatedly without losing their material properties. These resins can be used in fabricating shape memory composites. Traditional materials such as glues, muds have traditionally been used as matrices for papier-mâché and adobe. Inorganic Cement concrete, metals, ceramics, and sometimes glasses are employed. Unusual matrices such as ice are sometimes proposed as in picocrete. Topic: Reinforcements. Topic: Fiber. Reinforcement usually adds rigidity and greatly impedes crack propagation. Thin fibers can have very high strength, and provided they are mechanically well attached to the matrix, they can greatly improve the composite's overall properties. Fiber reinforced composite materials can be divided into two main categories normally referred to as short fiber reinforced materials and continuous fiber reinforced materials. Continuous reinforced materials will often constitute a layered or laminated structure. The woven and continuous fiber styles are typically available in a variety of forms, being pre-impregnated with the given matrix resin, dry, unidirectional tapes of various widths, plain weave, harness satins, braided, and stitched. The short and long fibers are typically employed in compression molding and sheet molding operations. These come in the form of flakes, chips, and random mate which can also be made from a continuous fiber laid in random fashion until the desired thickness of the ply laminate is achieved. Common fibers used for reinforcement include glass fibers, carbon fibers, cellulose wood, paper fiber and straw and high-strength polymers for example aramid. Silicon carbide fibers are used for some high-temperature applications. Particle Particle reinforcement adds a similar effect to precipitation hardening in metals and ceramics. Large particles impede dislocation movement and crack propagation as well as contribute to the composite's Young's modulus. In general, particle reinforcement effect on Young's modulus lies between values predicted by E C equals E alpha E beta v alpha e beta plus v beta e alpha display style e underscore c equals frac e underscore alpha e underscore beta v underscore alpha e underscore beta plus v underscore beta e underscore alpha as a lower bound and E C equals V alpha E alpha plus V beta E beta display style E underscore C equals V underscore alpha E underscore alpha plus V underscore beta E underscore beta as an upper bound. 
therefore it can be expressed as a linear combination of contribution from the matrix and some weighted contribution from the particles. E C equals V M E M plus K C V P E P Display style E underscore C equals V underscore M E underscore M plus K underscore C V underscore P E underscore P where K C is an experimentally derived constant between zero and one. This range of values for Kc reflects that particle reinforced composites are not characterized by the isostrain condition. Similarly, the tensile strength can be modeled in an equation of similar construction where Ks is a similarly bounded constant not necessarily of the same value of Kc T S C equals V M T S M plus K S V P T S P Display style T S underscore C equals V underscore M T S underscore M plus K underscore S V underscore P T S underscore P the true value of Kc and Ks vary based on factors including particle shape, particle distribution, and particle – matrix interface. Knowing these parameters, the mechanical properties can be modeled based on effects from grain boundary strengthening, dislocation strengthening, and a Rowan strengthening. The most common particle reinforced composite is concrete, which is a mixture of gravel and sand usually strengthened by addition of small rocks or sand. Metals are often reinforced with ceramics to increase strength at the cost of ductility. Finally polymers and rubber are often reinforced with carbon black, commonly used in auto tires. Cause <coughs> 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 Many composite layup designs also include a co-curing or post-curing of the prepreg with various other media, such as honeycomb or foam. This is commonly called a sandwich structure. This is a more common layup for the manufacture of radomes, doors, cowlings, or non-structural parts. Open and closed cell structured foams like polyvinyl chloride, polyurethane, polyethylene or polystyrene foams, balsa wood, syntactic foams, and honeycombs are commonly used core materials. Open and closed cell metal foam can also be used as core materials. Recently, 3D graphene structures also called graphene foam have also been employed as core structures. A recent review by Kurram and Zhu et al. have provided the summary of the state-of-the-art techniques for fabrication of the 3D structure of graphene, and the examples of the use of these foam-like structures as a core for their respective polymer composites. <laughs> <laughs> Fabrication methods Fabrication of composite materials is accomplished by a wide variety of techniques, including advanced fiber placement, automated fiber placement, tailored fiber placement, fiberglass spray layup process, filament winding, langside process, tufting. Z-pinning composite fabrication usually involves wetting, mixing or saturating the reinforcement with the matrix, and then causing the matrix to bind together with heat or a chemical reaction into a rigid structure. The operation is usually done in an open or closed forming mold, but the order and ways of introducing the ingredients varies considerably. <laughs> mold overview. Within a mold, the reinforcing and matrix materials are combined, compacted, and cured processed to undergo a melding event. After the melding event, the part shape is essentially set, although it can deform under certain process conditions. 
For a thermoset polymer matrix material, the melding event is a curing reaction that is initiated by the application of additional heat or chemical reactivity such as an organic peroxide. For a thermoplastic polymeric matrix material, the melding event is a solidification from the melted state. For a metal matrix material such as titanium foil, the melding event is a fusing at high pressure and a temperature near the melting point. For many molding methods, it is convenient to refer to one mold piece as a lower mold and another mold piece as an upper mold. Lower and upper refer to the different faces of the molded panel, not the mold's configuration in space. In this convention, there is always a lower mold, and sometimes an upper mold. Part construction begins by applying materials to the lower mold. Lower mold and upper mold are more generalized descriptors than more common and specific terms such as male side, female side, a side, b side, tool side, bowl, hat, mandrel, etc. Continuous manufacturing uses a different nomenclature. The molded product is often referred to as a panel. For certain geometries and material combinations, it can be referred to as a casting. For certain continuous processes, it can be referred to as a profile. Vacuum bag molding Vacuum bag molding uses a flexible film to enclose the part and seal it from outside air. Vacuum bag material is available in a tube shape or a sheet of material. A vacuum is then drawn on the vacuum bag and atmospheric pressure compresses the part during the cure. When a tube-shaped bag is used, the entire part can be enclosed within the bag. When using sheet bagging materials, the edges of the vacuum bag are sealed against the edges of the mold surface to enclose the part against an airtight mold. When bagged in this way, the lower mold is a rigid structure and the upper surface of the part is formed by the flexible membrane vacuum bag. The flexible membrane can be a reusable silicone material or an extruded polymer film. After sealing the part inside the vacuum bag, a vacuum is drawn on the part and held during cure. This process can be performed at either ambient or elevated temperature with ambient atmospheric pressure acting upon the vacuum bag. A vacuum pump is typically used to draw a vacuum. An economical method of drawing a vacuum is with a Venturi vacuum and air compressor. A vacuum bag is a bag made of strong rubber-coated fabric or a polymer film used to compress the part during cure or hardening. In some applications the bag encloses the entire material, or in other applications a mold is used to form one face of the laminate with the bag being a single layer to seal to the outer edge of the mold face. When using a tube-shaped bag, the ends of the bag are sealed and the air is drawn out of the bag through a nipple using a vacuum pump. As a result, uniform pressure approaching one atmosphere is applied to the surfaces of the object inside the bag, holding parts together while the adhesive cures. The entire bag may be placed in a temperature-controlled oven, oil bath or water bath and gently heated to accelerate curing. Vacuum bagging is widely used in the composites industry as well. Carbon fiber fabric and fiberglass, along with resins and epoxies are common materials laminated together with a vacuum bag operation. Woodworking applications and commercial woodworking facilities, vacuum bags are used to laminate curved and irregular shaped workpieces. Typically, polyurethane or vinyl materials are used to make the bag. A tube-shaped bag is open at both ends. The piece, or pieces to be glued are placed into the bag and the ends sealed. One method of sealing the open ends of the bag is by placing a clamp on each end of the bag. A plastic rod is laid across the end of the bag, the bag is then folded over the rod. A plastic sleeve with an opening in it, is then snapped over the rod. This procedure forms a seal at both ends of the bag, when the vacuum is ready to be drawn. A. Platon is sometimes used inside the bag for the piece being glued to lie on. The platen has a series of small slots cut into it, to allow the air under it to be evacuated. The platen must have rounded edges and corners to prevent the vacuum from tearing the bag. 
When a curved part is to be glued in a vacuum bag, it is important that the pieces being glued be placed over a solidly built form, or have an air bladder placed under the form. This air bladder has access to free air outside the bag. It is used to create an equal pressure under the form, preventing it from being crushed. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Pressure bag molding. This process is related to vacuum bag molding in exactly the same way as it sounds. A solid female mold is used along with a flexible male mold. The reinforcement is placed inside the female mold with just enough resin to allow the fabric to stick in place wet lay up. A measured amount of resin is then liberally brushed indiscriminately into the mold and the mold is then clamped to a machine that contains the male flexible mold. The flexible male membrane is then inflated with heated compressed air or possibly steam. The female mold can also be heated. Excess resin is forced out along with trapped air. This process is extensively used in the production of composite helmets due to the lower cost of unskilled labor. Cycle times for a helmet bag molding machine vary from 20 to 45 minutes, but the finished shells require no further curing if the molds are heated. Topic: <laughs> Autoclave molding. A process using a two-sided mold set that forms both surfaces of the panel. On the lower side is a rigid mold and on the upper side is a flexible membrane made from silicone or an extruded polymer film such as nylon. Reinforcement materials can be placed manually or robotically. They include continuous fiber forms fashioned into textile constructions. Most often, they are pre-impregnated with the resin in the form of prepreg fabrics or unidirectional tapes. In some instances, a resin film is placed upon the lower mold and dry reinforcement is placed above. The upper mold is installed and vacuum is applied to the mold cavity. The assembly is placed into an autoclave. This process is generally performed at both elevated pressure and elevated temperature. The use of elevated pressure facilitates a high fiber volume fraction and low void content for maximum structural efficiency. <inaudible> Resin transfer molding RTM. RTM is a process using a rigid two-sided mold set that forms both surfaces of the panel. The mold is typically constructed from aluminum or steel, but composite molds are sometimes used. The two sides fit together to produce a mold cavity. The distinguishing feature of resin transfer molding is that the reinforcement materials are placed into this cavity and the mold set is closed prior to the introduction of matrix material. Resin transfer molding includes numerous varieties which differ in the mechanics of how the resin is introduced to the reinforcement in the mold cavity. These variations include everything from the RTM methods used in out of autoclave composite manufacturing for high tech aerospace components to vacuum infusion for resin infusion see also boat building to vacuum assisted resin transfer molding BARTM. This process can be performed at either ambient or elevated temperature and is suitable for manufacturing high-performance composite components in medium volumes 1000s to 10000s of parts. Topic: <laughs> Light resin transfer molding LRTM Similar to the methods performed in resin transfer molding, light resin transfer molding light RTM involves a closed mold process. A vacuum holds mold A and mold B together to result in two finished sides with fixed thickness levels. Vacuum rings around the tools hold the molds together for this process after dry fiber reinforcements are loaded into mold A before joining with mold B the air is vacuumed out of the molds with a lower vacuum level, separate from the tooling. After the air is removed the resin is injected into the part. The vacuum remains in effect into the resin is cured. Topic. 
Other fabrication methods Other types of fabrication include press molding, transfer molding, pultrusion molding, filament winding, casting, centrifugal casting, continuous casting and slip forming. There are also forming capabilities including CNC filament winding, vacuum infusion, wet layup, compression molding, and thermoplastic molding, to name a few. The use of curing ovens and paint booths is also needed for some projects. Topic. Finishing methods The finishing of the composite parts is also critical in the final design. Many of these finishes will include rain erosion coatings or polyurethane coatings. Topic. Tooling The mold and mold inserts are referred to as tooling. The mold tooling can be constructed from a variety of materials. Tooling materials include inver, steel, aluminium, reinforced silicone rubber, nickel, and carbon fiber. Selection of the tooling material is typically based on, but not limited to, the coefficient of thermal expansion, expected number of cycles, end item tolerance, desired or required surface condition, method of cure, glass transition temperature of the material being molded, molding method, matrix, cost and a variety of other considerations. Topic: Physical properties. The physical properties of composite materials are generally not isotropic, independent of direction of applied force in nature, but they are typically anisotropic, different depending on the direction of the applied force or load. For instance, the stiffness of a composite panel will often depend upon the orientation of the applied forces and/or moments. The strength of a composite is bounded by two loading conditions as shown in the plot to the right. If both the fibers and matrix are aligned parallel to the loading direction, the deformation of both phases will be the same, assuming there is no delamination at the fiber matrix interface. This isostrain condition provides the upper bound for composite strength, and is determined by the rule of mixtures E C equals I equals one V I E I display style E underscore C equals sum underscore I equals one V underscore I E underscore I where EC is the effective composite Young's modulus, and V and A are the volume fraction and Young's moduli, respectively, of the composite phases. For example, a composite material made up of alpha and beta phases as shown in the figure to the right under isostrain, the Young's modulus would be as follows, where V alpha and V beta are the respective volume fractions of each phase. The lower bound is dictated by the isostress condition, in which the fibers and matrix are oriented perpendicularly to the loading direction 1 E C equals I equals one V I E I display style frac one E underscore C equals sum underscore I equals one frac V underscore I E underscore I Following the example above, if one had a composite material made up of alpha and beta phases under isostress conditions as shown in the figure to the right, the composition Young's modulus would be. The isostrain condition implies that under an applied load, both phases experience the same strain but will feel different stress. Comparatively, under isostress conditions, both phases will feel the same stress but the strains will differ between each phase. Though composite stiffness is maximized when fibers are aligned with the loading direction, so is the possibility of fiber tensile fracture, assuming the tensile strength exceeds that of the matrix. When a fiber has some angle of misorientation theta, several fracture modes are possible. 
for small values of theta the stress required to initiate fracture is increased by a factor of cos theta minus 2 due to the increased cross sectional area a cos theta of the fiber and reduced force f cos theta experienced by the fiber leading to a composite tensile strength of sigma parallel cos 2 theta where sigma parallel is the tensile strength of the composite with fibers aligned parallel with the applied force Intermediate angles of misorientation theta lead to matrix shear failure. Again the cross-sectional area is modified but since shear stress is now the driving force for failure the area of the matrix parallel to the fibers is of interest, increasing by a factor of 1, sin theta. Similarly, the force parallel to this area again decreases f cos theta leading to a total tensile strength of tau mi, sin theta cos theta where tau mi is the matrix shear strength. Finally, for large values of theta near pi 2 transverse matrix failure is the most likely to occur since the fibers no longer carry the majority of the load. Still, the tensile strength will be greater than for the purely perpendicular orientation since the force perpendicular to the fibers will decrease by a factor of 1 sin theta and the area decreases by a factor of 1 sin theta producing a composite tensile strength of sigma perp sin 2 theta where sigma perp is the tensile strength of the composite with fibers aligned perpendicular to the applied force. The majority of commercial composites are formed with random dispersion and orientation of the strengthening fibers, in which case the composite Young's modulus will fall between the isostrain and isostress bounds. However, in applications where the strength to weight ratio is engineered to be as high as possible, such as in the aerospace industry, fiber alignment may be tightly controlled. Panel stiffness is also dependent on the design of the panel. For instance, the fiber reinforcement and matrix used, the method of panel build, thermoset versus thermoplastic, and type of weave. In contrast to composites, isotropic materials for example, aluminium or steel, in standard wrought forms, typically have the same stiffness regardless of the directional orientation of the applied forces and or moments. The relationship between forces, moments and strains, curvatures for an isotropic material can be described with the following material properties, Young's modulus, the shear modulus and the Poisson's ratio, in relatively simple mathematical relationships. For the anisotropic material, it requires the mathematics of a second-order tensor and up to 21 material property constants. For the special case of orthogonal isotropy, there are three different material property constants for each of Young's modulus, shear modulus and Poisson's ratio. A total of nine constants to describe the relationship between forces, moments and strains, curvatures. Techniques that take advantage of the anisotropic properties of the materials include mortise and tenon joints in natural composites such as wood and pie joints in synthetic composites. Topic. Failure Shock, impact, or repeated cyclic stresses can cause the laminate to separate at the interface between two layers, a condition known as delamination. Individual fibers can separate from the matrix e.g. fiber pull-out. Composites can fail on the microscopic or macroscopic scale. Compression failures can occur at both the macro scale or at each individual reinforcing fiber in compression buckling. Tension failures can be net section failures of the part or degradation of the composite at a microscopic scale where one or more of the layers in the composite fail in tension of the matrix or failure of the bond between the matrix and fibers. Some composites are brittle and have little reserve strength beyond the initial onset of failure while others may have large deformations and have reserve energy absorbing capacity past the onset of damage. The variations in fibers and matrices that are available and the mixtures that can be made with blends leave a very broad range of properties that can be designed into a composite structure. The best known failure of a brittle ceramic matrix composite occurred when the carbon-carbon composite tile on the leading edge of the wing of the Space Shuttle Columbia fractured when impacted during takeoff. It led to catastrophic breakup of the vehicle when it re-entered the Earth's atmosphere on 1 February 2003. 
Compared to metals, composites have relatively poor bearing strength. Topic: Testing. To aid in predicting and preventing failures, composites are tested before and after construction. Pre-construction testing may use finite element analysis FAR for ply-by-ply -ply analysis of curved surfaces and predicting wrinkling, crimping and dimpling of composites. Materials may be tested during manufacturing and after construction through several non-destructive methods including ultrasonics, thermography, shearography and X-ray radiography, and laser bond inspection for NDT of relative bond strength integrity in a localized area. Topic. See also Aluminium Composite Panel American Composites Manufacturers Association Chemical Vapor Infiltration Composite Disambiguation Composite Laminates Epoxy Granite Hybrid Material Nanocomposites Rule of Mixtures Scaled Composites, American Aerospace Company founded by Bert Rutan Void Composites <laughs>